Some of the winds that we've clocked on Neptune do seem to be some of the fastest in the solar system. Some of these little white puffy clouds that we've tracked are really fast. They blow almost as fast at some latitudes as 1,200 miles per hour. In our quest for another home, one thing is clear. Humans could never visit this alien world. Yet there is a near neighbor, a world without storms and with a solid surface. This is Triton, one of Neptune's 13 moons, super chilled and covered in frozen nitrogen snow. It would be big enough for us to live on. The question is, could we? Dr. John Spencer, from the Southwest Research Institute in Colorado has been exploring the life-threatening hazards of Triton's icy climate. The surface of Triton is probably quite bizarre close up. We have frozen carbon dioxide, frozen carbon monoxide, frozen methane on the surface, but also a great deal of frozen nitrogen. It might form snow drifts and be crunchy underfoot. Any human exploration of Triton's savage surface is life-threatening. At 390 degrees Fahrenheit below zero, we'll need some special space gear. With assistant Eddie Goldstein, Spencer uses liquid nitrogen to replicate Triton's environment. It allows him to see how materials will behave on this super cool world. If you were to build a, a spacesuit that would function at Triton temperatures, you'd need something kind of flexible to make it out of. You might think you might use some kind of rubber material. At room temperature, rubber is soft and pliable, ideal for creating airtight seals on astronaut life support systems. But drop the temperature to minus 350 degrees Fahrenheit, and it's a different story. And just because something is flexible on Earth does not mean it is flexible on Triton. The rubber molecules are flexible at warm temperatures, but drop them into chilled nitrogen, they become rigid as steel. The rubber hardens and shatters like glass. I will uh, drop it The in. search is on for materials that remain flexible at super low temperatures. Scientists are looking at familiar substances, fabrics that you may be wearing at this very moment. Could nylon be used in the super-chilled world of deep space? And it's interesting because it's just as flexible even after it's cold. And it's not because nylon is anything special, it's because the nylon was woven into tiny threads. The secret of the nylon's flexibility lies in the weave. The fibers remain pliable because each strand is as thin as a human hair. So you might be able to make suits out of some material like this if you just treat it in a different way that takes into account this very unusual environment that we have out there. Even if humans do manage to walk on the surface in high-tech spacesuits, there is one other danger lurking beneath Triton's surface. What we see is these rather vague streaks, jets of material coming up from the surface. These dark marks are the clues to Triton's hidden menace. Beneath the frozen surface lie oceans of liquid nitrogen. As the sun warms the moon, the nitrogen turns to gas. This pressurized gas explodes as a geyser, blasting moon dust high into the atmosphere. The black dust finally settles on the white surface, leaving dark streaks. Back in the lab, Spencer recreates the spectacle. So what we're going to do is put the nitrogen in a situation where it's contained within this flask, just as it might be trapped underneath a layer of glaze ice on Triton itself, and the pressure would build up and that would produce a jet that could maybe shoot up six or 10 miles. Just like... Hey, we've got a geyser. Just as the pressure builds in the glass flask, 
on Triton, pressurized nitrogen trapped under the surface blasts moon dust into space. A world of violent geysers and crushing cold. With the right technology, humans could one day walk on the surface, but it's not a world we could easily colonize. Within our solar system, this is the end of the search. This far from the sun, any planet is cold and barren. After Neptune, there are only small, dead, icy worlds like Pluto. Beyond is the unknown. Out here, the possibilities are endless. And out here, perhaps we will one day find a place to call home.